With summer just around the corner, there's no better place to cool off than, you guessed it, the Antarctic. Yes, you heard me right. Instead of the beach, we're heading off to the freezing icebergs with Blue Archive Global's latest update, as we're getting a new decogrammation event. Alongside it comes the release of Swimsuit Aimee's banner, as well as the rerun of Himari's banner. So, here is a short review of our two Super Phenomenon Task Force students. We'll start off with the brand new unit, Swimsuit Aimee, who is an absolute diat in that swimsuit. And it makes you forget that she's the same age as Momoi and Midori. Also, it's incredible that she has to go to the fucking Antarctic to cool off. She is a special mystic supporter who has the combat power in urban terrains, S in field and B in indoors. She also uses this equipment set, and like any other healer, the necklace boosts her healing power. Let's talk about Swimsuit Aimee's skills. She has a 4 cost EX which does 3 things. Repositions 6 allies in a round shaped area to a specific location, provide them with a shield which lasts for 30 seconds, as well as increase their attack for the same duration at EX skill level 3 and above. With her basic skill, which activates every 45 seconds, she increases 4 allies' attack speed for 25 seconds. Her enhanced skill increases her healing, and her sub skill also boosts all allies' attack speed. At UE40, she receives additional buff retention stats on her enhanced skill plus, and at UE50, her field combat power upgrades from S to SS. As you can tell from her skills, Swimsuit Aimee is mainly a shooter and repositioner, similar to units like Trek Yuka and Swimsuit Shizuko. Firstly, her repositioning skills are fairly decent as it can move up to 6 allies out of danger, while also having quite a wide range. She also has the added advantage of boosting your allies' attack at EX skill level 3 and above, but sadly not by much even at max level EX skill. Not only that, she is a pretty good shielder cause she has ample shielding values, with a multiplier of 197% at EX skill level 5. Plus, its duration of 30 seconds is quite lengthy, which is always welcome. Her shields might not be as strong as Trek Yuka's, though let's be honest that would be a tall order, and they are still kinda decent. Other than that, Swimsuit Aimee also has team-wide attack speed buffs on her basic and sub skill, making her a viable option for team comms with fast attacking RAA units like Izuna or Sakurako. All these make her usable in two raids. Gauss and Shirokuro, with both these raids requiring shielders and repositioners. For Gauss, Swimsu Aimee's repositioning abilities can help your units dodge the trains in Phase 1, move them closer to the real cat in Phase 2 so that they'll target him, and place them in the correct color during Gauss's tree like mount attack. Furthermore, shielders are extremely important in this raid, as not only is your team's health recovery massively and permanently reduced on all difficulties, 50% recovery down from normal to extreme, 90% on insane and torment, but Gauss actually also deals less damage to students protected by shields. Your shielded units receive 75% less damage from Gauss on normal to extreme, and 50% reduced damage on insane and torment. Thus, Swimsuit Aimee's shields can be really useful against Gauss to resist his attacks. As for Shirokuro, you can use her EX skill to move your units out of the way of Shiro's snowballs as well as Kuro's park rides. And kinda similar to Gauss, your team has a permanent recovery down debuff on insane and torment difficulties at a whopping 80%. Meaning once again, shielders like Swimsuit Aimee are your best friends as they are needed in order to withstand their heavy hitting attacks. Finally, you can also pair Swimsuit Aimee with attack speed or AA units like Izuna or Sakurako as they are quite good in these two raids. Thus, Swimsuit Aimee's team-wide attack speed buff could potentially be very useful in an attack speed team comp against Shirokuro and Gauss. Overall, Swimsuit Aimee is a decent repositioner and shooter, with her attack speed buffs being a bonus, though it's not very useful unless you're running a certain niche team setup. Thus, in my opinion, you should skip her as she doesn't see a lot of use. 
not even in the raids that she is great in due to the existence of other superior shield repositioners such as Track Yuka, whom if you have, you honestly don't need to pull for swimsuit Aimee. And if you don't know why Track Yuka is so good, check out my video from a few months back to learn why. Not only that, swimsuit Aimee's banner is unfortunately paired with Himari's, who is an absolute must pull unit for those of you who don't have her. Plus, there are also other upcoming important units over the next few weeks, giving you more of a reason to skip Swimsuit Aimee as she is unimportant right now. But if you're desperately seeking a shielder repo for some reason, or if she's your waifu and you want some of those mummy milkers, then go ahead and pull for her, I guess. But again, I personally wouldn't recommend it. Next up is Millennium's beautiful delicate flower. It's our Tensai Bishojo Hakka Akeboshi Himari. Not only does she have a beautiful soothing voice, to the point of getting her own ASMR, but despite being crippled, she's got some amazing lickable feet. She is a special yellow supporter who is excellent in urban terrains, average in few, but terrible indoors. She also uses this set of equipment, being one of the only 4 units to rock it. Now we move on to Himari's skills. She has a 3 cost EX skill, which increases one ally's attack for 13 seconds. Her basic skill activates every 30 seconds, where she deals damage to the enemy with the lowest HP, while reducing their evasion for 23 seconds. Meanwhile, her enhanced skill ups her attack, and her sub skill boosts all allies' cost recovery. Her enhanced skill plus at UE40 provides her with extra buff retention and her urban combat power improves from S to SS at UE50. Himari is and has been one of the most meta units ever since her release. As alongside Akko, she's the best buffer and hyper carry enabler in the game due to a number of reasons. First, her EX skill, which is also her best feature. With it, she is able to basically double the attack of one ally with its extremely high multiplier of 105% at max level, massively increasing that unit's damage output all for the low fucking cost of 3. The trade-off for this is that it only lasts for a brief period of time at 13 seconds, but it's honestly so worth it as it is so potent your damage dealer is elevated into a killing machine. Secondly, Himari can also permanently increase your team's cost regeneration with her sub skill, and this is the cherry on top of the proverbial cake. There are only 3 special students so far who have this ability on their sub skill, with Himari being one of them. And it is extremely useful because your cost recovers even faster, allowing you to use your unit's EX skills quicker. And this is handy if you're using units with a high EX skill cost. Not to mention, her cost regeneration actually stacks with those of other students, like Swimso Hoshino sub skill and Chirino sub skill. So if you pair Himari with either one or both of them, well, cost meter go burr. As for her basic skill, while it isn't anything to shout about, it's still fairly decent, especially since the evasion debuff will be helpful against enemies with high evasion. Looking at you, you big ball of cheese. In terms of usage, Himari is extremely flexible as she can be used literally anywhere in almost every piece of content in the game from low level missions to the toughest of raids and even in PvP. For PvE, Himari is primarily used in high-end content like raids, where she is an essential unit in every single one so far, regardless of difficulty. Gauze, Cheese, Shirokuro, Hieronymus, Bina, Kaiten, Kurokage, Fury of Set, you fucking name it. Her main roles in these raids are to hyper buff your main DPS or the hyper carry, greatly increasing their damage output as well as provide faster cost regeneration with her sub skill. In the higher difficulty raids, you would also typically pair her alongside the other best buffer in the game, Akko, and this is the number one meta pairing in the game thus far. You would use Akko to increase your DPS unit's crit rate and crit damage, 
and Himari to double their attack, with these buffs stacking on top of each other. Thus, with both these units, clearing endgame content, especially the harder difficulty raids, becomes much easier and quicker, cause they are able to turn DPS students, especially units like Swims of Hanako, Mika, or Dresshina, into absolute monsters, as their damage output skyrockets and they can deal absurd amounts of damage. Other than that, Himari also sees quite a lot of use in PvP, where she is mainly brought in for her extra cost recovery, which will be very useful in letting your students activate their EX skill faster. Overall, Himari is an absolutely amazing and meta buffer, as she is a must-have unit if you want to make even the most difficult of content much easier. Thus, I would highly recommend you pull for Himari, especially if you don't already have her, cause she will be extremely vital for your teams in any content. That being said, I personally feel that you don't have to go for UE40 if you're a casual player, cause the extra buff retention is mainly only useful for the whole tactic of what is essentially using a DPS unit's EX skill twice in one duration of Himari's EX to maximize your damage and clear the raid faster. And this strat is only really done by hardcore players cause it's a pretty advanced technique. It's a whole rabbit hole, I'm not gonna get into it in this video. But if you wanna try it out, or perhaps you have spare paroxines, then go ahead and get UE40 Himari. But again, in my opinion, 3 stars Himari is good enough, UE40 isn't a must have, and it's technically overkill. You can also pull for her if she is your waifu, and you want her L2D cause you're a feed connoisseur, or you simply want to hear her go, when you first get her. However, if you already have Himari, then you may skip her, unless of course, you want additional copies. Though, keep in mind that Camp Hare is arriving around the end of the month, who is very similar to Himari, except the former is a striker unit. And it would be better to have both Himari and Camp Hare so that you can have two attack hyper buffers for two teams. But that's another rabbit hole to fall into when she actually releases, and the most important thing right now is to pull for Himari if you don't have her. Plus, even though she is unlimited, I wouldn't rely on a spook cause in my opinion, Himari is a unit that is much better to have sooner rather than later cause she is exceptionally good. Plus, I feel that the chances of spooking her is quite low compared to other students. I mean, I know someone who played the game since the beginning and only very recently just got her. So I wouldn't recommend waiting for a future spook, but instead pull for her when her banner drops. And that's all for this week's review. All in all, I can boil down the entire video to this simple fact. Skip swimsuit army cause there are better options, and fucking pull for Himari if you don't already have her, cause she is freaking meta. But most importantly, she has a delicate voice and some great feet. Anyways, good luck with your pulls if you're pulling for Himari, and I'll see y'all in the next one.